Gentlemen, welcome to another town hall for Dragon Con 2021. I am your host for tonight, the one and only Dot. I'm here to be your chaos dragon and to bring you some super special stuff for tonight. We've got some awesome guests, but I want to start with something a little new. I want to welcome Richard Brumberg as our first town hall ASL interpreter for Dragon Con. Thank you so much for stepping up and doing this for the community and to make Dragon Con that much more accessible for everybody that loves to share and all our many fandoms. Uh, now, we can hop right in, but I have do 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 breaking news. All right, y'all, if you've been scrolling our social media, you might have seen a thing. We haven't even started the show yet, but I gotta tell you. Look at this. Look at it. There it is. Super secret sneak peek. Go find out for yourself. Hit a social media. We can't say anything in particular is going to happen or any one person might be coming to Dragon Con, but they can and they did. So check it out. We're really, really excited. There's a little teaser out there for you, but what could it actually mean? Now, back to where we started. We have some super awesome guests for tonight including uh, uh, Jamie Reeves, who is the director of comics and pop art, Mary Turner, the director of the art show, and a guest that I'm very, very excited uh, to sit down with, Dino Andrade, a voice actor and a super kind workshop instructor for Dragon Con, where you can actually learn some of those skills. So I'm super duper excited to welcome all three of you to tonight's show. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to remind everyone that while you're watching live you can submit questions for our guests which we really encourage you to do those will get answered at the end of the show so you're just gonna have to stick around and listen uh you know to to me make a fool of myself <laughs> I'll start uh, you can... right now. Yes, I am wearing pants. <laughs> yes, perfect. Uh, we're off to a yes. great start Dragon Con. <laughs> just want to get that straight. Now you can submit those through our Discord, through YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, wherever that you are currently watching live. Um, and if you are watching live, let me just say thank you for being here to support our love uh, together of Dragon Con 2021. Now, right before our Q&A at the end, you got to stick around because we're actually going to be announcing the aquarium winner from the like social media uh, uh, contest that has been going on. You don't want to miss it. Uh, well, because it could be, it could be you. Uh, so make sure that you hang around all the way until the end. Uh, I, if you can't tell, I'm so excited for this year. Coming out of last year, oh boy, have I got that Dragon Con itch. And I've been reminiscing about last year's online Dragon Con that was so fantastic uh, and really brought the community together. And I was simmering on getting to hit one of the highlights of my, my dot uh, career. I got to sit down with Felicia Day and just chat. If you missed it, I'm sure you can go over to the YouTube and check it out. But she is coming back. And this time I might actually get to meet her in person. Uh, so I'm very, very excited. And I'm looking forward to moderating some more panels for the guests that are happening, uh, both online and offline. So just make sure you, uh, you find your best way to Dragon Con this year. Now, speaking of super awesome folk that are coming to the table, let's just start off by welcoming back um, our this voiceover actor and workshop instructor for Dragon Con, uh, Dino Andrade. Thank you so much for coming out. Oh, I, I, oh, I've been coming to Dragon Con for 10, 12 years now. I wouldn't miss it. I, you know, I, I, I would have begged you guys. <laughs> if I wasn't already invited. So no, well, I'm glad they didn't make you beg. 
<laughs> me too. Me yeah. Too. Me too. They, they made so. me. No, Very much so. Well, okay. So you've been coming to Dragon for a while, but but how long yes. have you been voice acting? I I actually started voice acting uh, in 1984. Uh, although the first thing actually came out in 85, but I was working on it in 84. I was uh, originally what was known as a Foley walker. And for those oh. of you who don't know what a Foley walker is, I would do sound effects for uh, movies live to picture. Like uh, I and another Foley artist, if somebody like punch somebody, <laughs> um, <laughs> I might have an arrow in my hand, which I would wipe past the mic <laughs> while the other guy oh. had hit a baseball mitt. You know, and that would be the punch that you'd, you know, see on screen. Uh, or in this particular case, I was working on the film House with William Catt mm -hmm. uh, and, and Richard Mull, the 1985 horror comedy classic. And there's a sequence with William Catt stabbing this monster. And that's actually me with a screwdriver and a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and, that's very cool. Yeah, and I, I was asked to do uh, a sequence where uh, there's this gal in a bikini walking in the backyard of this house uh, in high heels, as most women are in Los Angeles. Of course. And, uh, and so that's actually me in the high heels walking <laughs> the picture as I'm watching, getting every little step. And uh, and then they they changed reels and there was this little this monster that they called the little critters and they 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 the, the creature was making this laughing motion it was uh, the late actor Felix Silla in the in the suit and um, they didn't have a sound for it and director Sean Cunningham said we don't have anything and I just piped up and just did this <laughs> and and uh, and 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 the director just immediately said, uh, you in the heels do that again. <laughs> yeah. and, and I did, and that's how I broke into voiceover. That's and, amazing. Steve Miner, director Steve Miner, that's right. And and yeah, and that's that was my very first thing was House in 1985 doing the Little wow. Critters, and I've been doing voice work ever since. Who would have thought a pair of heels got you this far? Right, right. And I, I, I tell people that I did my first job in high heels. Yeah. That's amazing. That's such so. a cool story. Now, now, obviously, you have a love of sound because you started as a Foley artist and then right. moved into voiceover work. So uh, what inspired you to, to teach a, a workshop for all of us crazy Dragon Conners? <laughs> well, you know, I have always loved um, the craft of acting and in particular, uh, the voice arts because... Mm. Um, as a voice actor, I can be pretty much anyone I want, you know. <laughs> I'm not limited to the color of my skin, how old I am, how large, thin, fat, whatever, doesn't matter. I can be whatever it is. I can, uh, you know, look at the picture and decide <laughs> what it is that I want to do, you see. <laughs> You know, and that's that's the thing that was so liberating. I, uh, you know, I, I was an on camera actor for a lot of the 80s as well. And being as I am Mexican American, it just seemed like every other role was, you know, some gangbanger. Mm. And, but in voiceover, I could be anything. That's uh, awesome. And that's that's just that's the that's the beauty and marvelous thing about it. Plus, I am a long, 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 long time fan, devotee, fanatic of all things sci-fi, horror, and fantasy. And so this was a great way to meld those two worlds together because of so much of voiceover work is in the realm of fantasy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so I'm just a happy guy. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm living the dream. I feel like, you know, like when Tim Russ talked about getting the role of Tuvok in Star Trek Voyager, how he talked about he was a geek who made it. That's how I feel. Mm. That's how I feel. And I, I love this. And so my teaching workshops at Dragon Con is basically giving back to the community that I've called home. Mm. Because, you know, growing up uh, hopping Air Force bases and not knowing, you know, where I belong, what world and so on. When I went to my first convention, it was like, oh, my people. <laughs> yes. Oh, do I know that breath I'm of fresh air? Home. <laughs> yeah. And so that's really what this is all about. I mm -hmm. and and I love it. I love I love teaching. Uh, I've trained many many actors. Uh, I, I I I love the craft. I love uh, sci-fi horror and fantasy. I love con. So this this puts it all together. Right. This puts it all together. This is a, this coming to Dragon Con is something I look forward to more than anything else every year. I love it. Wow. I just love it. Well, I'm gonna say this: if you 
for all of you out there, if you were even questioning taking the workshop, obviously just the passion and excitement alone should be pushing you to go ahead and sign up. But just in case they're still on the fence, what can you tell them to like, come on, let's go well, make voiceover work, mouth noises together. <laughs> you know? What I could tell you is, is that it's not a workshop that's based entirely on, let me show you how to act in front of a microphone and getting into the, a lot of what I do is based on the thing that I excel at, which is character work. So if you wanted to know how to create different voices, different types of characters, different types of, uh, of personalities and so on, that is what will be the focus of this workshop. And my partner in the workshop, the great Greg Hauser, uh, you know, he comes in and has tons of experience on the commercial work. I have tons of experience on the animation work. We've both worked on tons of video games. So between the two of us, we give you this well-rounded mm. education on all of that. And I've had students, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I have had students come out of the Dragon Con workshop. I know, I know, I know of at least two who've made the move to uh to to sit to cities where there's a lot of animation and have gotten jobs in the industry and are working mm -hmm. from this workshop wow so, uh, yeah 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 i mean i teach regularly i constantly have students uh i'm what you call a meisner trained actor i was also with the groundlings in los angeles and i pass all of that on but again my emphasis is on character work you know mm -hmm. not just getting in front of a mic and emoting if you really were just curious you know how do these actors make all these different sounds and create all of these character voices and i don't know how to do that I will show you. I, I, I've got a number of actors who are clients. I don't know how often, I'm sure you all know who Victoria Atkins is, mm -hmm. uh, all of her great work. I, I, I train her. I was just working with her recently, working on characters and comedy and things because she's <laughs> so used to doing just straight dramatic roles in video mm -hmm. games. And so she's like, I got to do this character stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, it's so exciting. No problem. Yeah, yeah. no problem. I'm there for you. I did the same thing with Roger Craig Smith. I've done, you know, there's, there's a lot of pe people that were so this is what i would be imparting to you is those little secrets you know because i i do i have a lot of dramatic actors in video games there was a bunch that i just worked with on wasteland 3 nice. who were like god i wish i could do what you do coming up with characters and i was like you can let me show you i'll show you wow it, the, they li it lives in you i can do that i can do that plus one last thing if you have come to Dragon Con you, and want to be a voice actor, you are already a step ahead. Because if you're here, that means that you love sci-fi, horror, and fantasy. And that gives you an edge in this business. When I first started working in World of Warcraft, when I first started doing, you know, Geblin Nekatork and Nutricide <laughs> and Nimeron and all these guys, right? They would have a book of all of these sci-fi, horror, and fantasy references to for the actors to say, you know, okay, well, this is equipped. And every one of those, I was like, yeah, you don't have to tell me. I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yo, Grammar, Worm Tongue, Lord of the Rings. Got it. Move on. You know, you know, uh, Ryan McDowell, Planet of the Apes. Got it. Go on. You right. know? And it was like, and, and, and that's one of the beautiful things about the Dragon Con crowd is they've got that in. They already have this love of great works of imagination in their blood. And that gives you a leg up. Mm. Combine that with learning how to create all these characters, you know, that live within you that you don't know. And who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Well, everybody, that has been, wow. First off, wow. Second off, I'm sure, chat that it has given you tons of things to think about. And we're going to come back because I'm sure you, you all have questions. Um, but I want to thank you for hanging out for a second. And make sure you stick around because we'd love for you to come back for the Q&A at the end. But tell everybody where they can find you. Obviously, you're working with some incredible voiceover talent. But where can we find you out there on the oh, you know, interwebs? You know, <laughs> just look up Dino Andrade on, on Facebook, Instagram. I, I spend a lot of time on, on Instagram and Facebook. So, you know, those... Those are the places I, I, I talk a lot about my son, who's also I've he's 11 and I trained him. And now he is currently starring on four shows, done a slew of commercials, done a couple of movies already. Um, you know, I, it, you know, if I can train an 11 year old. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, okay. uh, put that on a t-shirt. Well, thank you again so much. Oh, uh, we my hope pleasure. to see you again for the Q&A at the end. We really, really appreciate it. And I know I'm pretty excited to show up at your workshop because uh, you said a lot of good things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank again, you. it's two for one because Greg Hauser is the other part of this. And Greg is magnificent. He especially has a lot of uh, experience in anime. And his forte is teaching actors all about anime dubbing. So, so if you're an anime fan and that's where you want to go, you're going to get that out of this workshop too because that is something Greg is a master at. Well, no reason not to show up, y'all. Thank None you so much. And we're going to bring in our next guest, Jamie Reeves. Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. Not like, you know, you're a director and all of that of like comics no. and pop art or whatever. Um, no big deal. But I am so excited to get to sit down with you. And before we start, I have to ask you a super duper important question. Okay. Okay. What do you, what do you got? Okay, ready? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, IDW, or, or, or. Yes. What's your favorite? Yes, yes. Oh, Good answer. Oh. Well, but really, I mean, probably I started reading Marvel and DC. Um, were my favorites. Batman, X Men, X Men, huge X Men fan. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, probably. Marvel. That's a hard one. I know. I put you. It, it, is, hard. it is hard. <laughs> Well, thank you again for, for coming. Why don't you uh, just quick, in case, you know, somebody's fresh to the, the Dragon Con community, tell us a little bit about your, uh, you know, what, what the what the comics and pop art uh, track is all about. Uh, well, I mean, you know, we've been around for a long time. Uh, actually, I started at Dragon Con probably about 13 years ago, uh, but I've only been doing comics and pop art, pop art for about two years. And um with the uh, small COVID interruption. Uh, but um, basically, you know, we just uh, try to gather a group of um, artists and creators last year or 2019, we had around 200. Uh, wow. this yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, this year we're trying to make a little more space, uh, create a better flow. And we're, but even with that, it's going to be uh, probably around 140 guests and um, uh, attending artists. So it's going to be great. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this year we're okay. welcoming back some some old guests. We're gonna have uh, a fan favorite, George Perez. He's coming back. Penny uh, Howard's coming back. She hasn't been there in a few years, so that's gonna be great. Uh, David Mack, Zoo Orzo, Stephen Green. Um, excited to have all of them, and uh, we're gonna have some new guests too. Uh, we're having uh, John Romita Jr. I mean, he's a legend. It's gonna be he's gonna be awesome. So we're excited to have him. Uh, let's see, Sam Mags, Carl Potts. Uh, Bill Reinhold, Linda Lesman Reinhold. So yeah, it's it's a lot, it's going to be really really great. Wow, wow, what a lineup of like I'm like listening to these names as you as you feed them off, and my brain's going oh oh ooh uh, that's uh, that's very very cool. Now if uh, you know if you're like Di and you tend to get lost very easily in large crowds of people uh, at cons, uh, where can we find this incredible uh, comic and pop arts artist alley? Well, you know we are in the America's Mart building two. Uh, on the fourth floor. So basically get on the escalator and go past all the meters all the way up to us. All the way up. Yeah. And and yeah. so this year you're expanding. Things are getting a little like uh, making room for everybody uh, and all of these guests yeah. um, as well. Absolutely. So should be a nice little comfy artist alley this year. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. And, you know, besides our guests, we've got tons of programming. We've got over yeah. 40, 40 panels set up already. Um, we've got like tons of Marvel, tons of DC panels. We've got uh, diversity and heroes panel. Um, we're doing Ooh. pop art, art collecting, indie comics, web comics. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. And right. besides that, we've got tons of workshops. We've got uh, drawing workshops for uh, both kids and adults. And um, I think there's at least three or four of those now. And we've got, if you want to break into the comic industry, uh, we've got some world building, uh, both from the writer and the artist perspective, uh, oh. and, uh, scripting and a workshop on just really how to make your work stand out in the industry. So you can yeah, what an important panel too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really really going to be nice. So I always love the uh, the live painting. Please tell me we can paint some things live this year. Well, actually, Christian Wagner, um, he's a Star Wars reflection artist. If you've never seen his work, you should really check it out. 
Um, he is going to be painting live in the front of Artist Alley the whole time. So it, it's really, really amazing watching. I just him. love watching him work. Yeah, it's just so amazing. Uh, uh, you know, because we we get it off the shelf, right? Uh, we get to see it uh, off a exactly. shelf, but to watch them actually make it is always such. Uh, one, it's kind of soothing in the chaos of Dragon Con to like watch an artist work. I always find, but it's also just really That's impressive true. to watch these artists that we love so much that bring all this fandom to life really get to to shine a little bit yeah. uh, live. So, uh, very cool. Very, very true. Yeah, it's very good. And uh, then you also want to check out, uh, we're having uh, Marvel DC trivia again, which is really Ooh. awesome. And if you've All never right. seen it, you really should check it out because it's, it's, it's a great time. That sounds like a good time. And I'm, I'm sure we've got some kids programming uh, coming through as well. Yeah, we have a lot of kids programming and we're also uh, cross promoting with the kids track. Uh, we have some of our guests that are going to go over there and do some workshops as well. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be great this year. <laughs> um, so I'm being, I'm being reminded of something. Uh, I, I have this package. Yes. It's a surprise. Mm -hmm. You do. Uh, you I do. can't shake it hard enough to find I'm out sure. what's in it. Would you, do you want to tell everybody, Jamie? Yeah, I'll be glad yeah, to tell yeah. you. Know, <laughs> earlier, I was an X-Men fan, right? Yeah. So this year, uh, we're really, really excited to have Chris Claremont coming to the show. It's going to be ex 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 it's amazing. He hasn't oh been to Dragon Con in over 20 years. So it's, this is really, really a big deal for us and for him. That's very exciting. As also an X-Men fan, I just got a little fangirly live in front of everybody. Oh. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. yeah I mean, he, he, he was my favorite, especially in the X-Men run. He is, he's the man. Well, uh, America Smart Building Two, fourth floor. Be That's there, right. Dragon Con. Uh, it sounds like uh, the the comic track has it going on uh, this year, and uh, with some extended space and some incredible guests, I don't think uh, I don't think you can miss it. No, you can't. Can't. You really can't. can't no, not cannot. <laughs> uh, well, thanks again so much for coming, filling us in, getting us hyped. Uh, I'm going to give you the same offer. You just you know go have a, a bubbly backstage. Yeah. Uh, and at the end, we'll Q and A. Right I'd like to yeah. add one more thing if I could. Oh, of we're course. We're really excited. Um, we're going to be, we started the uh, kids sketchbook program back in 2019. Oh. And this year we're expanding it to the art show too. So basically what that means is uh, you come to the front of the art show or artist alley and uh, we're going to give you a kid's ske sketchbook for anybody 12 and under. <laughs> so you take it, you look at the back of it, there's a special logo on it. Then you go out in the alley and you look for a tent card with that same logo that matches it. And you just approach the artist and they'll give you a free uh, sketch and or autograph. It's like a little scavenger hunt. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's. Uh, do you think if I was like, I'm under 12, they'd let me participate? Uh, no. <laughs> That's not, no, they no. no, they wouldn't. <laughs> Thanks again, Jamie, so much. No. Uh, we'll see you here at the end for some good questions. I have no doubt that awesome. uh, everybody out there wants to know more. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And next up, we have... Mary Turner. Mary Turner, welcome to the screen. Drum roll. The director of the art show. Speaking of art and sketches and artists. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you're here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really happy to be able to join y'all today. For sure. I mean, uh, Dragon Con covers the gamut of a lot of things, but we kind of get to see two sides of the same artistic coin tonight. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it, it's great that we're, you know, we're partnering with Jamie and his group with the, the kids sketchbooks and it's great to just kind of have that art community going. Oh, for sure. And, uh, I think, uh, those of us that I, I know, uh, every year I really enjoy getting to buy art from an artist at Dragon Con. And so, uh, I, I have a hole in my wall from 2020 that I guess means I'm going to have to buy two pieces of art this year. You're just going to have to buy more art. I'm just going to have to buy more. <laughs> I blame you uh, <laughs> when my pocket's empty at the end of the weekend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, thanks again for coming. And I guess we should start with our, our artist guest of honor, which is always a big deal. Yes. And we are super excited about this one. Our artist guest of honor is William Stout. And he is a prolific artist and illustrator. He has over 50 years professional experience. But the one that we're particularly concerned about it's our 35th anniversary. He designed our first logo. Oh my gosh. So it's kind of a little nod to a, a nod to our history. That is so cool. What a great guest of honor. Well, there you have it, Dragon Con. Now, 
I know that I can't be the only chaos dragon out there that likes to collect art. How many fans find their way in and out of the art show every year? Oh gosh, um, thousands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We we are definitely, you know, we're we're a hotbed and we we just lots of art loving fans. Art loving fans. Now now let's say you're out there in an art loving fan and, and uh I, I want to find or mm -hmm. what, what what would I find in the art show other than oh. well, well art. In the art show? Let me start by saying we did a complete reboot in 2019. <gasps> Oh, okay. We, we just did a total reboot and we are super excited about the new design. Um, one of the things you're going to find is it, it, there's a streamlined gallery where you can really showcase some of the, or where we showcase some of the juried artists, um, kind of their best of works. Um, each artist is available on site, which is not previously the case. So you can really mm. interact with your favorite artists. And, oh, that's cool. And ask about your favorite pieces and, and that kind of thing and get like the story. Um, and then um, we have kind of co cosmetically opened the aisles. Um, so it's a much more open feel uh, than the previous layout. Um, and we seem to get a lot of really great feedback in 2019, and we're excited to come back from two from 2020 to try again. Right? Yeah, give it a give it a go. Um, I love this expanding space. How how artistic of you uh, to get a new face, a new design. So um, obviously they're going to find art, uh, art that they can buy. But what about programming? Programming. We have two programming rooms, and we have four full days of programming. Um, and we do everything from make and take workshops and hands-on demos. Um, we're actually gonna have a Kickstarter panel this year that we're super excited about. Um, and then as a, a little, once again, a little nod to the Dragon Con community, we have adopted the loyal or order of the ribbon. So the, face, the Facebook group and the, the organization, the, the loyal order of the ribbon um, has, has been adopted by the art show. And so they will have panels and meetups and that kind of thing mm. at, at the art show will we'll be kind of a location for them. And and the auction. The auction, the charity auction. Um, yeah. Always a, a super exciting time. Um, Monday at 1 p.m. Um, we will have, um, you know, donated pieces. We have special specialty auction pieces every year. Mm -hmm. We'll continue that. Um, we also have the um, contribution canvas that has become a tradition um, that you can, of course, you know, bid on. And we always do our best to raise as much money for charity as we can. So, all right, that that. I'm so, I'm so excited! I'm so excited to go back to Dragon Con. <laughs> I can't help myself. We're, well, we're excited too. We're. I think everybody's. I'm bursting at the seams. I don't know about you. The the virtual art show did did great last year, but yeah. we're so excited to be back in person. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just like good in our community for like doing it. We did it anyways, and we're back this year to do it uh, again and even better. Well, exactly. I'm sure that, uh, you know, everybody watching may have some more questions about the art show, about the auction, about programming. So uh, if you have a chance, stick around there uh, in the in the, in the the green room, uh, and we'll uh, see you backstage and then hopefully back for some questions. Sounds great. Thanks so much. All right. It is time. The time you have all been waiting for? The time to announce the aquarium VIP ticket winners. Oh, well, we have longed to see those underwater critters and to do it without having to pay for a ticket. Now you can, if you won. And I'm very excited to announce from a Facebook entry, Maggie Coogan, congratulations. Um, you get your two tickets, two VIP, not any, no, let me just, let me back up. Not just two tickets, two VIP tickets, two VIP tickets. As Dragon Con invades the Georgia Aquarium, Dragon Con weekend, congratulations. Thank you so much for your submission. Thanks for participating. And thanks for making Dragon Con that much more awesome. But if that wasn't enough, we have to shout out a super special honorable mention to Anna Sweetster, also from a Facebook entry. Because you cannot go away empty-handed. John Walker over at the Georgia Aquarium said this was also so awesome and it was so close that we just could not give away 
two more tickets to uh, for general admission to the Dragon Con night at the aquarium. So guess what? Congratulations, Anna. You two are going to be joining us uh, for a little, you know, undersea adventure. Uh, thank you so, so much for both participating. Um, yeah. And getting to, to come and uh, play with us for Dragon Con 2021. Now, our guests have been waiting patiently backstage for Dot to stop talking. <laughs> And for them to answer your questions that you have been posting in chat, we have some really, really important ones. So I want to welcome back in all of our guests so that we can start this Q&A and get your burning question answered. So welcome back. I think everybody. Yeah. Yeah. One more drum roll, Jamie there. Rachel. Yeah. Wrong Ra person. You're just a <laughs> surprise. What? What is this? Yeah, here, yes. <laughs> Did you eat Jamie? <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> well, oh, so um, there he is. Oh. <laughs> surprise. <We're back. laughs> don't, don't look now. Um, well, Rachel, I imagine if you have come to gracious with your presence, it must be super duper important. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited. Um, so it's funny, we got a fancy question on it as I was watching the questions, and it happens to be um, a wonderful night for us because we are uh, releasing our progress report, um, which is exciting. Uh, it's been updated this year. Uh, we decided to go with a digital format. Um, Honestly, lots of reasons. One, because a lot of the successes we saw with uh, Dragon Con Goes Virtual last year and so many people um, really want kind of that uh, information right at their fingertips and on their devices because goodness knows everybody's holding a device these days. Um, but also really with this year especially, we know that things are changing so quickly and um, everything. We wanted a little bit more time to be able to convey a lot of the, the guests that we've booked in the last couple of weeks uh, to be able to include those in the publication as well as we actually have the opportunity, similar to what we did uh, back in Dragon Con Goes Virtual with updating the Quick Start Guide, we're gonna mm -hmm. be able to update it. As things change, as things happen, as policy things are announced on August 1st, things like that, we're gonna be able to change this document so that when people access it, uh, it can have new information in it. So that was really exciting. Also, my favorite part, uh, I'm hoping you, you did that QR code or, or click those links from the a uh, little picture we just had up there. But my favorite part is in the middle, we've actually done a little bit of a throwback uh, because some folks don't know this is our 35th anniversary, unless we said it because I was kind of managing elsewhere. <laughs> uh, but it's our 35th anniversary. I have our fun 35th anniversary raglan on. Um, and so we took the opportunity to also kind of look at this as a fun throwback to all those magazines that I used to read and lots of our fans I'm sure read the like teen beats and the like mm -hmm. silly little things so what you're gonna find in the middle of the progress report is the cool I know sorry about that uh it's gonna be like the coolest little pullout that kind of uh goes back to the days uh from when Dragon Con was as first being thought of and and first being brought to fans so it's kind of fun it's a lot of fun um so we're really excited to have fans so that is available now uh, so we encourage everybody. We had uh, two different ways. There's one that's interactive because some of our fans just really love to see the flipping through the pages. Um, but then there's another PDF that you can download at any time. And um, like I say, all those things will be uh, kind of updated as we go. But uh, the progress report for anybody that's not um, gotten it before, because normally we do just send it out to our members uh, from that year as well as previous years. Um, the progress report kind of contains everything that's going on with the show. It's, it's a sneak peek, if you will, everything from guests, performers, events, fan tracks, all those kind of things. So you can go ahead and start to get in your mind, kind of like what your plan is. It is not the schedule. It is not the schedule. We are not there yet. Uh, we're closer for every single day. Um, but it is kind of a preview of, of a lot of the things that you can. And it does. It highlights our incredible workshops. Uh, so if you want to uh, read more details uh, about the voice acting workshop and all the others we'll offer, it's got all the details. So I encourage everybody to, uh, to go and check it out. Yeah. Well, it, that was important, Rachel. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that was so, yeah, that was, it's very important. Um, and, you know, I appreciate saving some trees this year, going all digital. I dig. Uh, plus, you know, I prefer to look at my cell phone anyways, right? <laughs> it fits, fits in my, my very tiny pocket on my spandex oh, cosplay. Cool. 
<laughs> um, oh, kitty. Um, okay, so we've had a few questions come through. So uh, some of them are logistical questions about Dragon Cons. We're going to see if we can't knock those out, most of which are about time. When is stuff going on sale? When can we sign up for photo ops? Okay. Well, yeah, One Day Badges. Tell us all about One Day Badges. Yeah, so the One Day Badges. Uh, again, a reminder that these are an incredible limited uh, uh availability uh, it's uh, within the attendance cap that we have established and those will go on sale at 10 a.m on august 1st and that would be eastern like we're in atlanta it will be our time at uh, 10 a.m uh, the reason we did it at 10 versus a little earlier is that we are planning i don't know if this is a question later but i figure i'll just hit it uh, we are planning to release the full plan that we've talked about a lot with the uh, health and health and safety precautions and plans and changes and all of that mm -hmm. uh, before those uh, memberships go on sale Right, so that uh, people so, just need to be on the lookout for the policy uh, announcement. Yeah, we're uh, planning yeah, around 9 a.m., but that one uh, probably a little more flexible. But I know people are planning for those one-day memberships because uh, mm -hmm. we anticipate those going very, very quickly. Um, so, yes, 10 a.m. Uh, for those memberships. If you forget what I've said, it's also included in the front page of the progress report that you should have already downloaded by now. Y'all been called out <laughs> live here on Dragon God. No. Um, the last thing we had a question about photo op signups too. Are those uh, have we do we have a time for those yet? Uh, we do not. Normally we uh, see them in uh, the last week of July, first week of August. Uh, we are again uh, proudly partnering with Epic uh, Photo Ops. Uh, they're an incredible team. They love our people. They know our people, and they do a phenomenal job with both the guests and the fans. Um, I did see on the comments that uh, they are showing on another show that weekend. Absolutely well aware. They actually have several teams uh, that they can deploy for on-site support and uh, doing the actual photo ops. So have no fear. We have not double booked. Uh, everybody knows uh, about it and they will be going on sale shortly. Ours is a little bit different in that uh, before they go on sale, we like to have an idea of programming uh, because we do more programming than any other convention out there. Um, and it gets a little complicated uh, with the scheduling and things. So they are actively uh, working to get those up uh, for sale on their website. And we will, of course, promote it on social media once they go up. Great. Fantastic. Well, we've had some more questions come through. This actually is about uh, comics and art show, looks like. So uh, will there be access to the comic panels without lining up to go through vendors or uh, maybe have some tips to get to see those panels? Um, I have tips. So if you <laughs> want to go see a program, a particular panel, my advice to try to avoid those lines is to come early, you know, look around, find some of your favorite artists or maybe a new artist and just kind of hang out with us and give yourself plenty of time to get to that panel. Nice. Um, and it looks like we got art show question. Love the art show in 2018. Will it be close to the feel of that versus being maybe an extension of the vendor hall? Um, the answer is it, it's not an extension of the vendor hall, but it is totally a different feel from 2018. Um, it's, we, we do still have our programming and uh, kind of piggybacking off the last question. Um, we do have programming uh, that starts the minute we open. So we will have a special line for that so that everybody can get in with their seat. Um, and we do have some uh, hands-on panels that are limited availability. So you will want to sign up for those in, in advance. Great. Um, very nice. Um, let me just say thank you for having a signer. Um, I imagine Dragon Con would say you're welcome and thank you for being here. Um, parades. we got some parade questions coming in. Good. Will the parade be open to the public for street view? If not, will attendees be able to watch from the street? Well, I'll take that one. Um, so uh, we're so excited. Uh, this past week, we uh, were provided the parade permit uh, by the city of Atlanta. Of course, everything as in planning, I hate to say this year is always subject to change, but we are ecstatic and uh, we are planning. Uh, but no, there is a major change uh, with the parade. And that is that uh, spectators will be uh, Dragon Con members only. Uh, so they will be able to watch it uh, on the street, Dragon Con members. We will be doing a lot of uh, marketing and a lot of education out there, um, which is the exact opposite of what we normally do. We normally, you know, welcome all the uh, people in the city and, and around uh, the area to come join us. Uh, it's going to be just the opposite this year of uh, stay home, join us. We are broadcasting on the CW. Uh, they're doing that again, and they're uh, kind of uh, beefing it up a little to support us to make sure that the people at home can watch us. And we'll be also broadcasting um, our DC TV uh, coverage of the parade as well, um, out to fans who would like to watch but aren't in attendance at the a physical show. So again, 
a, that's a big change for us. Uh, the city is very supportive of it. Uh, so we're just going to be um, spectators, uh, only Dragon Con members. Wonderful. That seems reasonable. Comfort of your own home or a uh, hotel room or wherever it is you're putting your feet up for the weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, now in, in, in regards to the parade, is there a, a, a oh, the, oh, this is good. Creative guy, <sighs> creative guy, boy, howdy, do I have an answer for you. We live on Dragon Con time. What is this, 24 <laughs> hours? Get out of here. Of course it will be. We celebrate from sunup to sundown, Thursday through Monday. <laughs> Yes, bring your spirit. We'll figure out uh, how to celebrate for 24 hours straight. I'm sure there's somebody out there that wants to celebrate with you. <laughs> I love your answer. I'm actually going to like keep that for me uh, for the next time because like I'm all like, okay, wait, informational. Uh, there are going to be some hour changes, uh, namely uh, gaming. Building uh, one is going oh, okay. to um, close from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, still, gaming is going to be available. We're actually going to do 24-hour uh, open gaming in the Westin in the Savannah oh. Ballroom. Uh, that's also included, don't you worry, in the progress report, as well it will be included in the main plan that's discussed on August 1st and everywhere we can post it. But but that is a change. Uh, we get a lot of questions around performers. Yes, we still plan the same hours uh, with some capacity changes, uh, obviously, to, to keep everybody as safe as possible. We are going to keep the uh, around the clock programming that you come to expect, but I, I still like Dot's answer better. <laughs> no, Dragon Con time, time. will make it work. 24 hours. I'm going to use I told you, I'm just here to cause chaos, really. You're here to keep your mind, Rachel. Um, now, uh, last kind of business question, and then, oh boy, do we have some great questions coming in um, for Dino. Um, any idea when the app will be ready? <laughs> Great. Ooh, you're so funny. Um, I would say that uh, I know that there's a drinking game involved somewhere, <laughs> um, but we got a lot going on and too much work to do to, uh, to partake. Uh, but yes, we will still have the app. Uh, it usually is available. We send out uh, schedules to our guests around August 1st, and we need that time to turn around, make sure everybody can make it, book the flights and things. So typically the app is released about 10 days prior to the show, and that would be the same plan uh, for this year. Nice. Okay, great. Oh, great question. Dino, were you the voice of Professor Putricide? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> yes. Um, nice. Good um, news, everyone. The slime is flowing again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. nice. Oh, badge pickup. What time? What time? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Professor. <laughs> Just make something up. You're good. Uh, right now, uh, that again will be uh, all the information. But as of now, as far as hours of registration are going to change, we do want you to uh, pick the badges up early. Uh, right now, it is a little bit in flux because uh, with the membership cap that we've talked about a lot, we're not sure what it looks like. We do anticipate selling out, so registration is going to look a little different, and we'd actually be able to process uh, in two ballrooms, which is exciting. The potential of that's very exciting uh, from a, a logistics and safety perspective. Uh, so some of that's a little bit up in the air, but right now we are planning on the hours being the same. Great. Uh, oh, we got a shout out for, oh my gosh, that cat, y'all. <gasps> oh, so get cute. Your get, get your, oh, oh. That is a spoiled cat right there. <laughs> yeah. And he deserves it. Yeah. Well, well next... my, my, my booth. Uh, is basically an inverted cat post. <laughs> so right. when I open the door, they're like, oh, daddy. Thank <laughs> you, daddy. That's awesome. So. That's amazing. Oh, thanks. That's so wonderful. I appreciate your efforts. The art show is lovely. It is lovely. Thank you. Now, um, let's see. It looks like we got some questions maybe about some costuming stuff coming through. Yes. Where do we find out more info on the new page to stage costume contest? That will actually, well, that is actually on the website under the contest uh, tab. Uh, there used to be a page to stage comic book uh, contest, but this one is now under sci-fi lit. All right. Well, there we go. Um, Let's see. Can you tell us? Oh, great question. Can you tell us where the open tabletop gaming is going to be this year? Is that part of the, the move you were talking about? Shut your mouth. Hold on. Uh, I'm just going to say, because I don't want to say it wrong, I am pretty positive it's in the Savannah Ballroom of the uh, Weston, but there's a lot of changes, so I'm not going to lie. Right now, what I am going to encourage you to do is 
remember what I came on for, read that progress report. We do highlight uh, some of the gaming changes in there and any that are not included in there uh, will be out on that plan in August 1st, uh, very specifically uh, that you'd be able to. Also uh, gaming in particular, because it has undergone a lot of changes this year. It is um, because there's been massive renovations in building uh, one of America Smart, which is gonna be exciting when they're finished. Not as much when they're in process, <laughs> um, but it's going to be great. And uh, but there's a lot of movement there. So uh, remember that we have apps available of uh, apps. We have maps available in the Dragon Con app when it comes out that 10 days prior, as well as uh, the gaming guide. If you pick up a gaming guide, because that's something that interests you, you can have a map anytime uh, right there. And we encourage you use those heavily this year uh, in gaming in particular. Uh, they are uh, win the award for flexibility when it comes to movement and placement. Yeah. Well, we are out of time, so I'm being told. But we got to do a couple things. First things first, I want to thank you all for coming on, for sharing your time, your energies, your love, getting us hyped, even more hyped than last week. We'll have another town call, call coming up to continue to keep you hyped. But... I would love to give a round of applause to our incredible uh, ASL interpreter here tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Richard, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we can't just like, we can't just wrap up. We can't just wrap up. I have to wrap up with some kind of incredible, important question. And I'm gonna put it to our guest here tonight, Dino. Yes. What is your fondest Dragon Con memory? My fondest Dragon Con memory. My fondest Dragon Con memory was when there was some big football game going on and there was a whole bunch of people who had nothing to do with Dragon Con that were there. They had big hair and a lot of sweaters and so on. And we were getting <laughs> in one of the uh, elevators at the Westin and we were, we, were, we were heading on up. And this woman, I don't know why it was me. But this woman just turns and she's got this big hair. She turns around and she says, what is this Dragon Con thing? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, well, it's a convention for sci-fi horror fantasy. And she looked at me like, like, don't talk down to me. And she's like, well, I know that. But what is it? Is it a game? Is it? And I said, yes, it is a game. If you'll notice our badges, and there was others in the back. So you notice our badges, they have different colors on. They represent different teams. See, and throughout the, the course of the convention, <laughs> we go on a scavenger hunt, each representing a different hotel. And then at the end, we all see who collected the most, and the winner gets a $5,000 prize. And she's like, Five thousand dollars? I said, yeah. And everyone else in the in the in, in the elevator is going, <laughs> you know. And she's like, well, I had no idea. <laughs> and and that is my favorite Dragon Con well, memory. Well, I'm gonna tell you, out there somewhere is a woman who's trying to swipe badges, thinking she's trying to win a team and win five thousand dollars. So if your badge gets swiped this year, blame Tina. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, so much for being here, for hanging out, for checking in. Make sure to follow us on social. Make sure to get those badges if you haven't already, or find the best way for you to participate this year. And 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 a very quick shout out to uh, Christine Marie Silver. Yes, I do remember that song, and I would Aww. love to talk to you about that because we're going to be launching Soul Geek three very soon and i would love it to be a part of that so if you're coming to dragon con come talk to me about that i would love that yes i remember <laughs> thanks again everybody let's get a wave out we will see you at dragon con 2021 bye everybody <laughs>